It's magazine time again. March, April issue, and of course, I have to do flowers. Look at these. Join me while I create these beauties. Let's get started. So being a successful nail technician is all about technique and great products. I want to thank Ugly Duckling for sponsoring this video and supplying me with these beautiful products and I'll show you how they work all through this video. So we're going to start by building the nail. I've got five naked fingers here. I've removed all the product that I had and we're going to start right from scratch to build these beauties. So we're going to start by buffing these nails. Like I say, I've removed all of the product, most of the product. Sometimes I leave a little thin layer on. Ugly Duckling has really great files and I always use the medium. There's medium, coarse and fine. And I always use the medium very gently on a natural nail to prep it. And I just want to gently go over the surface of that natural nail. You're removing the oils and any shine and any product and any cuticle. Now my cuticles, because I removed these yesterday, they're pretty good shape, but you can push your cuticles back with a cuticle stick. These are pretty pushed back and they're good to go. I'm just gonna put some glasses on and we'll get going on these beauties. So I'm gonna gently buff up every single finger and just smooth any product that's sticking out a little bit and make sure I get the cuticle really tight there without filing the cuticle. Just be really gentle around the cuticle. Okay, and then you just wanna gently wipe away the dust. I wouldn't wash your hands. Sometimes there is a lot of oils and soap and that can contaminate and interfere with any adhesion that you got going on. I will recommend when you're using one brand to stick to that brand, like use the powder, and liquid with the primer and prep. Reason being is because if you don't, you can get into some service breakdown issues. So this company, they have a specific prep and prime that is meant to work with their liquid and powder. So I'm gonna start with using the prep. Now preps are mostly isopropyl alcohol and it's a cleansing and dehydrating agent. So I'm gonna put this on every single nail. Next is a primer. You're going to be careful when you're putting this on. You don't want to flood the nail plate. You're going to put it on very gently. It kind of works like it's absorbing onto a paper towel. It'll absorb into the nail. One dip of the brush generally does all five nails. This is what makes your product stick to your nail, okay? So if you forget the prep, it's not as crucial, but if you forget the primer, it might be a bit of a bummer, especially if they have any oils in their nail plates. Okay, so who doesn't wanna work with something as adorable as this? Look at that, just sparkles, just very elegant, isn't it? I think packaging does say a lot about a company. It makes it like they're very proud of their products and I like that. I've worked with Ugly Duckling before and this is somewhat new packaging that they have and this is really neat. I've never seen liquid dispense in a pump. So we're gonna try this. It's new, everything I've got here is new. So I imagine like a soap pump, you have to undo this a little bit. So when I was opening this, make sure that you hold this tight as you pop this up. I've never seen monomer in a pump situation. This is a pretty cool idea. How many times have you poured it and kind of spilt it, right? This is a new one, so it's got the little air pockets in there. But look at that. You don't need much of this stuff. So this is kind of a neat idea. I gotta be honest with you, I like it. It's easier to add and add that way than um, pouring it because often we spill it. That's great, okay. And I am going to use the Ugly Duckling pink powder. Their pink is quite beautiful. Now, one thing I love is a new brush but a good brush. Try to do this job without a great brush. We're gonna to get to the good stuff here. So this is a oval eight acrylic brush. It's one of my favorite shapes. When you get them, I love that when it stays into a point. When you get them, they do have a packing powder. As I said, all these products are new. So they're gonna have a packing powder in it. You can start to see it. Can you see that? See the powder starting to come out as I separate it. That's just to keep the shape of the brush. 
I love that because you don't want it to get wrecked in shipping, right? So I'm just going to take that out. And then I usually just take it away and then just kind of, but don't like smush it down. Just kind of like gently go back and forth and try to get that out. Okay. It's a very fine powder, so don't breathe it in. So I'm going to form this up so we can build basically this shape. I'm actually going to have a matching set of nails by the time I finish this video. It's always exciting. learn to pinch them not so tight that it has a pinched look but just bringing it in nice and narrow it really saves a lot of sculpting especially if you're used to sculpting it underneath it's kind of nice okay and then I'm gonna get my brush completely soaked in the monomer keeping its really nice shape and I'm gonna start building I was reading the comments the other day and came across a good question. So Shelby asked, what if you were mixing color and you applied it and it wasn't the right color, you didn't like it? How do you get rid of it? <laughs> Which is a great question. So when you're mixing color or any color you put on, you put it on with acrylic. As you know, acrylic dries relatively right away. Uh, if you don't like it, you kind of have to make a split decision pretty darn quick. And if you find you don't like it, just pat it out as smooth as you possibly can and as thin as you can, and then put to the color that you prefer over top. If you make the decision really quick, then you could literally scrape it right off. That's a good question. So because I'm gonna match the shape to my other hand, I'm going to make them a relatively medium long uh, almond shape. This pink is really pretty. I actually really like it. It's got quite a translucent color to it. We're doing an opaque yellow over top. So if you don't like the look of translucent, you could use the fufu pink, which is more of a cover pink. It's quite pretty. I'm just gonna make sure that I build my structure really sound in there. On the longer side, I don't want them to break, so I'm gonna make sure my structure is really good. This stuff is like velvet. Very smooth, the liquid powder ratio, once you get it right, is just really velvety kind of consistency. Quite nice to work with. Now, I, sometimes people will do this, even clients, you'll see, will kind of measure them up. It can be a good way to do it. I did these yesterday, so sometimes when you do nails from one day to the next, because it's art, you can do it a little differently, and just a little tweak can look just a different day, depending on how you feel, can make it look a little different. So you just want to maybe Make sure you got everything in there, to, and I do. I've got the right length, and it's completely wide enough, and it's the proper shape. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and build the rest of these out. I'm so excited, it's really coming together. So I have filled all of them, and I have shaped them all, and I saved one to show you. Now, when it comes to shaping, you wanna make sure you've got a really good file. I always like to shape and sculpt with a coarse file. And I always start with my sides. Oh, make sure you score the edges first. That means just taking with another file off like this and softening those edges because when they're new, they can be sharp. Okay, so I go down both sides. Then I go underneath like this. That way when I'm looking down, it's quite even underneath. It's not drooping on either side. And then I start sculpting on the top. See, I'm just really fine tuning that point on the tip for the almond shape. Okay, so now for the more smoothing files. Now when I put my gel on it, I do want them to be some grit on there. I want it to be rough enough so that the gel will adhere for at least two weeks, right? So they do have other files. Ugly Duckling has coarse, mediums, and fine. 
and they are more of a smoothing grit. Now one is very rough. I'm gonna use the medium one to just sort of smooth out around the cuticle, but still leaving it rough enough that the gel will grab right onto it. Just makes it a bit softer around the cuticle and ready to grab onto that gel polish. And I'll go through each and every finger, making sure that the cuticles are quite flush. Now the application on my cuticles was pretty good, so there's not a whole lot I had to take away. It was basically just shaping into the rest of the nail. Ugly Duckling doesn't recommend that you wipe it with acetone or a cleanser. You just go wash your hands. Just make sure there's no oils or lanolins inside your soap to leave a residue on there. So that's what I'll do. And then we'll put some gel polish on the beautiful yellow color. Well, this one. So now I'm gonna polish this beautiful yellow color. I chose this color because it's so warm. It's a very warm yellow. It's number 004 in the Ugly Duckly collection. And when you put it on, it goes on really nice and smooth. I really do like their gel polish, I have to say. But one thing I like about this company in particular is if you have any questions, any education questions, they are right there to help. You just call them or email and they are more than happy to help how to use their products properly. Now when you're applying a polish or gel polish, no matter what, we're always trying to get our cuticles absolutely as close to perfect as we get. But in this particular design, I'm putting flowers and um, gems, diamonds around the cuticles. So if you do find it's not absolutely perfect, it's okay because we're gonna put some gems around there so you don't have to get too crazy about trying to perfect those cuticles. Now I'm gonna do the thumb. Okay, I'm gonna give it a good nuke and it's about 30 seconds for an LED for Ugly Duckling Gel Polish. Okay, so with a second coat, of course, it can make it quite a bit more solid, which is the look that I'm going for. Oh, that is so pretty. You can see the color really come to life at the second coat. It really is the true color of what it's meant to be. I never want to judge a color on the first coat because it really is just kind of a wimpier, not so pigmented version of the color that it claims to be. Sometimes I'll turn my brush a little bit, especially a smaller finger, to fit in that space. You really want to get picky with your cuticles. Just get a very tiny brush. This company has what they call a detailer and that can get into the really tiny aspects of the cuticle if you're going to get really picky. Okay, and then the thumb. I can see a tiny little divot. Sometimes you can't see that when you're, when the dust is so heavy inside your acrylic and I didn't really look at it after I washed them. I can see that little divot. So you have two choices. Obviously that's a boo-boo and you don't want that. If a client or yourself is going for that nice clean look, then you kind of to take the polish off and you gotta fill it in or file it down and get rid of it. It's like a pothole, little tiny pothole. If that happens, yeah, that's what you have to do. But in this case, because I'm adding gems and flowers, you know what? Rather than taking it all down and all that and fixing it, I think I'm just gonna put a gem on it. <laughs> you can do that. Oh. Just gorgeous. Give that a nuke. When I'm doing almond, it's very easy to cap the free edge because I just kind of go right, right on the side. You can see the brush sort of captures it right on the underside as I'm doing it. Okay, 
Okay, I thought there was a little hair there. Oh, I see like a little hair might have that. There was a little hair, then I saw it, but I didn't get it. And I think it kind of went across this finger. So I'm just, oh yeah, there it is. I didn't use any cotton pads or anything. I have a cat and I believe when he comes in here, he leaves a little hair. He rarely comes in here, hey, cameraman? Not very often, mm -mm. no. So every now, maybe it comes off of us, eh? <laughs> Could be my hair, yeah. Could be, I meant the cat hair. It gets on you oh. or me. <laughs> <laughs> and then we transfer it into this room. I didn't mean it's your hair. <laughs> it could be. It's too fine. Yeah. It's soft like cat hair. Yeah, my hair's soft. <laughs> Not as soft as the cat. Mm. <laughs> well, that's insulting. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to give this a 30 second cure as well. Nuke, as I say. The color's on and the colors are cured. So now I'm going to show you how to build flowers doing a 4d flower we have 4d flowers now 3d used to be the max and now we've got them back in the day we built them up and we just called them you know big roses but now we've given them name it's 4d flowers okay <clears throat> so i've got some beautiful little roses here i don't um really make 4d flowers that often but i was playing around with them this weekend and this is what i'd come up with and they're really actually quite cute so I'm going to show you how I made them you know, just to get a look and see what which ones I made. I made like little ones because I want to make different sizes as it's coming coming down the nail, you might say. I made some with them yellow centers and then I made some blue ones and of course yellow ones. And I'll show you how I got that kind of shading in there. I should have had a picture to show you before I put the shading, but maybe we'll do one together. I created a whole bunch because they do take a bit of time to do, but I'm going to show you how to do one and then you'll know how I made all these. So let's try that. My colors of roses, I used yellow. Now this yellow is a bit strong, so I mixed it with white. Okay, I'm gonna start with the yellow flowers and I'm going to start with a bit of white. Now you don't need a ton because we're making the tiniest little flowers. You don't wanna waste good product. But I'm gonna put just a little bit of the yellow. Now I want kind of a pinch. Now, Ugly Duckling has a really nice little tool here. Look at this one. This is a great little tool. Look at the little scoop on the end of that. All you need is a pinch. Just a little bit. This is a very strong pigmented color. You don't need much in there. Yeah, not much at all. And I'm going to add a little bit of clear too to give it some strength for constructing the flower. Just a little bit. That might have been a little too much. And if that's the case, then I'll have to add more. Okay, and then I'm going to stir that and see if it's generating the color that I'm looking for. Now remember, when you bring monomer to your powder, it's more intense in color. That's pretty. I think I just want a pinch. You never know until you do it. Mmm, that's looking good me like that. Okay, so now I want the blue. So there was a baby blue, here it is. It's, this is so pretty. Now I want a little bit more of this because I really did like the color straight out of the container. I didn't really have to add anything to this one, except I'm gonna add a little bit of clear to give it the strength. Now the reason why clear is a bit stronger is because it doesn't have any pigment in it for color which can compromise the product a little bit. Just gonna add a little bit. Makes me feel happy. Okay, and then I'm going to just mix that a little bit. And this color is just stunning. Look at that. I love it. It's very soft. Now again, when you bring the monomer to it, when you bring any liquid to it, it's gonna be a little bit more intense. I'm gonna get a special brush, which is the 3D brush. Now, if you notice, it's not called the 4D. <laughs> It just, 3D means they make the three-dimensional flowers or designs or anything like that. And why this is so great, look at this little tip. You can use the um, acrylic eight, but from these, because what I've learned, I was using the acrylic eight and the flowers were turning out quite beautiful, but 
my fingers are actually very narrow and on the smaller side. So the flowers that I was trying to make has to be really tiny. Otherwise, it looks like I have giant one flower. If I make them tinier, then I can maybe have a bunch. My idea was for a bouquet of flowers, <laughs> but my fingers just aren't big enough for that. So I decided to use the very small brush. So you just want a little bit of monomer on your little tiny brush. And you want to gather a little bead of the yellow and it is little you can even drain it on the paper towel if you want just to get rid of the excess and then put the little bead on it's best to do it on a form and then you just want to flatten now this might be actually too big so i will take some away if i feel it's too much and i'm just going to flatten 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 and i want to make one side on the flat side and the other side is not as flat it doesn't have to be in fact, it's better if it's not. And then I sort of taper off the edge. I don't even mind if I sort of bring one side down a little bit, and you'll see why in a sec. Okay, so you just sort of give that a few seconds. Sometimes I'll even blow on it to help it dry a little bit faster because I'm impatient. And then I'll get my brush wet with a little bit of monomer, see if this is ready to roll. And you literally just tuck it into itself. Be a bit wet there, I don't want it to turn mushy. See how you're picking it up off the form? And then roll it. And every room I found when I was working on it one day is working great. And then the next day it wasn't so much, but the room was, I think it was colder. So it was setting up, maybe it was more humidity, it was setting up, I think much faster. So it was kind of curing before I got a chance to roll it. So temperature of your room makes a bit of a difference. Humidity and things like that. And now what you have, if you flip it up, you can see, look at that. It's most adorable. This color is really pretty too. It's almost the exact same color of the yellow. Like the center of a rose, it's quite pretty. So then as that sits there, you're wanting that to harden, you can build your next layer of leaf for the flower. I'm going to take some of that away. I don't want it to get too tall. Now this one, you can sort of round it a little on the bottom because you want it to wrap around that little inside part. Okay, and then to take it up, you get it. it might be a little mushy. I'm impatient, remember? Trying to lift it off of this form. Forms are really great for building these. I don't think I've really used anything else but these. It's a little mushy because I'm impatient, but you get this little leaf. Well, it's a petal, pardon me. it up oh I forgot one part then I will take some product actually you could take the color but it takes a little longer to set although this is drying up fast right now and I will put a little bit on the base so then I will take this flower push it in there and push it over see that and I'm going to squish it right in I'll take my little brush and I'll hold it if I'm feeling impatient, which is usually the case. Hold it together. Gently blow on it and it will hold the acrylic product and it will dry enough to hold it in place. Isn't that cute? You can start to see it form. Sometimes I'll get a pair of tweezers and I will just pinch it if I want it to be a little more 
together. It's very effective. Okay, I'm gonna do my next petal. So I do want you to notice though, where these two have joined on this side, that's where you're gonna put the next petal where the two have joined, you're gonna put the next petal there and it's gonna go around. And you kind of offset the new petal on the joins of the previous petal, okay? So I'm gonna get, you can see what you use, eh? I obviously mixed way too much. I could keep that and make a lot of flowers. I could get my bouquet of flowers after all. So just pan it out, give it a little bit of arch in there. This is super tiny guys, super tiny. It is really tiny. Yeah. It's amazing I can see it actually. Why is that? Why can I see that? My eyes have gotten better just today. It's like the um, lady who lifts the car when the dog is in trouble and saves the day. I can just see when I absolutely have to. It's really important. Okay, so I'm going to, I did a little too soon last time, but I'm gonna see if it's cute. Yeah, it's a little soon. Impatient. Okay, so I'm gonna take another little bead of the product and put it over here. It's a bit much. And I'm going to put it at the base. Now the thinner it is, it takes longer to dry. See, it's still a little too soon, but I am going to be coaxing it along because I'm impatient and it's drying already, the, the bead that I put at the stem. And I'm gonna lay that right in there. Oh, it's beginning to be cute. <gasps> oh, looky there. Oh, darn, that's adorable. And then I'll take a pair of tweezers and like instill it in here. Like just kind of hold it a little bit just to secure it. And then if it's thin enough, the petals, you can still take the tweezers and just bend the little leaf just a little bit. See that? And just that little bend makes it look very real. <gasps> oh, I'm better today than I was Yesterday, this looks better than those ones. You're Darn learning. it. You're learning. Not fast enough, apparently, because now I want to remake all the roses today to what I'm going to put. Oh, darn. Okay, that is like the pretty flower. Get a little bit of liquid on your brush to create some sun shading. Then I get a little bit of this yellow powder. Remember the full strength powder? Tiny little bit. I mean, I'm talking tiny. I'm going to get rid of some of it on my thing here. And I'm going to go in. And I'm just going to brush it into the very inside to give it a little bit of dimension. It's a nice texture. <gasps> oh, that's so darn adorable. It's adorable. It's better than those ones. Well, those are good too. I like them. This one's better. Why is it better? I don't know. Maybe it wasn't off my game. I was really proud of those yesterday until I saw this one. This one's super cute. Okay, I'm just going to show you the blue one. Maybe my streak doesn't last very long. <laughs> Maybe not even as long as this video. I don't really need any more roses. I have already made enough, to be honest with you. So you're just doing this one for fun? Yeah, I just wanted to see the blue color. And you just want to see if that last one was a fluke. That's maybe part of it. I thought the other ones were really good too. Well, they were until I saw this one. Hmm. Now I'm just loving this one way better. But you were doing the other ones on the couch. You were relaxed. I was watching TV. Netflix playing in the background. Yeah. So that may have been a distraction. Maybe it was too much of a foreground situation. I think so. Yeah. gonna pick this leaf up petal it's a petal
So my little advice, my little trick is bend the leaves, but you gotta make them thin to start with. That looks so cute. So I did make a couple more that I can add to it. I think I do like what I was doing today better than I was yesterday. And every day will differ because it's art. I would definitely make them ahead of time. If you know a client's coming and they want a whole bunch, I would definitely make them ahead of time. This does save time, but you can make them as you go. Then applying them in the area or design that you're going to, that's a bit of a artistic thing as well. I don't want to just plunk them on there in any old way. So I'm actually going to frame the nail and kind of curve them down the side, like start at the cuticle and then curve them down the side. And we're going to add all the gems around it. I'm going to use this product called Stick It. It's Ugly Duckling product and they've coined the phrase Stick It and it's very good stuff. I'm going to put a lot on this one nail. This one's going to be my accent nail. So I'm going to buff the entire nail because Stick It will adhere to it really well. So I did put a top coat on, but I'm going to just buff that slightly. especially if you want it to last any length of time, right? Okay, and then I'm going to get my stick it. This stuff is a thicker viscosity gel and it just, <laughs> the product will just suck in there. And I've got a tool that I can scoop it up. So I'm using this tool by Ugly Duckling called the Blinger tool. And it's got the dotting tool at the end so I can pick the product up. And the other end I'm going to use to pick up the diamonds. So I'm going to grab some stick it. Now these flowers are big, so I'm going to need a fair amount for it to nestle right in there and adhere. So I'm going to start with doing them around the cuticle. I don't really know exactly what pattern I'm doing here yet, but I know I'm going to use some of the big flowers right in here. Okay. And I'm going to grab and I'm going to place this big flower. Now I could put it right back toward the edge, but then I'm gonna have this design encroaching over the skin and I still wanna keep that nice roundness of the cuticle. So I'm gonna look at it this way. I'm gonna keep that flower away from the cuticle a little bit, but I'm gonna turn it a little bit. I'm just twisting it a little bit and just, oh yeah, that looks cute. I think I like that. Yeah, that looks good. And I'm going to see maybe if I can pick. I'd like to get a blue one in there. It might be too big, but I'm just going to try it. Oh, my. They are big. I am not used to wearing stuff like this. I mean, it's really pretty. It's not very practical for everyday use, of course, but it's just fun. It's just so pretty. I just want to take a look at it like this. Uh, if it's too big, it just loses the shape of the nail. That's my opinion. I like to keep it within that almond shape of the nail. So I'm just going to twist and turn these so I sort of maintain that. I think I like that better. Okay. The sticket is still there. I can see it. So I'm going to grab this waxy tool, the waxy end. That's excellent for picking up gems. I wouldn't pick up gems without this thing. And I'm going to take some of the bigger diamonds and I'm going to put them on the inside here where the shticket is. Just going to add a little bling in there. The shticket is there. I might as well shtick something on it. Yeah. Just before you nuke it, I just want to capitalize on that. Oh, that's so cute. Two is kind of an even number. You want to have an uneven number when you're dealing with art. So I need a third one and maybe I'll do the yellow. So let's get some stick it in there and I'm going to do it right about here. And I'm gonna, I've got a pair of tweezers here just to pick up my roses and I think I need more of a smaller rose. Maybe this one laying on its side as if it's kind of like a bud. That might work. Let's take, oh, yeah, that's quite cute. Okay, but I'm gonna bring it down here a little bit more, tuck it under there. Yeah, because I'm gonna put a big diamond in there, I think, to just take up that space. 
Now, if I knew I was gonna put that much on the nail, which I wasn't sure about yet, I would have just covered it with stick it, but I wasn't quite sure. So I'm gonna put it right here for that big time. It's very stringy, which is good because you want it to be nice and thick for adhering the products. But when you go away, just make sure that string isn't following you. Oh, and then I wanna use, I think the bigger ones are in here. I'm just gonna dump it out a little so I can really see what's in there. Oh, what a nice little collection. So I'm just gonna get a big one and stick it right there. It's so pretty. That looks good. Okay, I'm gonna do some more stick it and more gems, but I'm going to nuke this because I don't wanna bump it. If I start doing all the other diamonds, they could shift the little ones. I'm gonna do the really, really tiny ones too. And I don't want them to shift. The stick it needs about a 45 to 60 second cure in this lamp. You know, I'm doing something different for the magazine because I wanted to just, you know, be a little bit more dramatic and eccentric on the magazine, just more exciting. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of product around here, up in here, and down the side here. Okay, now I'm gonna stick a whole bunch of the teeny wee ones. See how easily this is to work when you have this blinger tool? Before these tools came out, I would pull my hair out trying to pick them up with tweezers, licking the end of a cuticle stick. It was insane, I hated it. But this has just made it so much more fun. I really wanted to get them up, right up in there. The wonderful thing about the stick it too is it's not gonna cure on you. It's just gonna sit there and wait until you stick it in the machine to cure it. I put it on my other hand here and I've had a shower and makeup and grocery shopping and it's really on there. Look at that. Isn't that adorable? It's beautiful. It is. Yeah, I'm just gonna nuke this now and just make sure I seal the deal on these little guys. Let's just give it a bit of a nuke, okay? Just because I'm afraid I'm gonna knock it out of position and it's gonna be a mess if I do that. Okay, so just that little pocket in here. You won't even see, probably see this in the photos and stuff, but I'm just gonna add it because if you did look under there, it's gonna be nice. Yeah, no, that, see, that just filled in that hole there, you see? Yeah, it did. Okay, I might have completed this now. Okay, so um, I'm going to, let me see where the top coat is here. I am going to take the no white top coat. Remember, I thought I was gonna do the whole thing. I think I'm good now. Yeah, I'm good. So on that note, I am going to polish the free edge up to the diamonds. I don't want to go over top. You can, but I kind of don't like it because it looks kind of mushy and it takes away a bit of the dimension of the gems, if you ask me. Again, might be just my opinion, but well, it is just my opinion, but just maybe it's just me, but I like to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. <gasps> oh, I hit it. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, good. Adorable. And I'm really glad I went with the shine because the flowers are matte. So it was nice to have the contrast with the shiny nail. Originally, I was gonna go with the matte. Oh, that was so fun. That's so great. Okay, I'm gonna keep going and perfect all these. Let's check out the reveals nice and close. Well, I think these are definitely magazine worthy. They are beautiful. And thank you to Ugly Duckling for sponsoring this video and the magazine cover of my new online magazine. Thanks for joining me. Have a good day.
Bye.